Hey, so what's up guys? Mace here with Joy Tech. And I know I haven't made a video in a couple of weeks uh, due to the CNY holidays as well as my dad was having a medical condition. But anyway, I'm back here bringing you a lens unboxing and review this time. And it's actually the Sigma 16mm f1.4. Uh, I've been waiting for this lens ever since last year uh, when they released it. I wasn't able to get it in Malaysia yet. But anyway, I've just got my hands on it. But before we begin, let's start with the unboxing. So taking a tour around the box, you will see actually the Sigma logo on the top left as well as uh, showing you the date of manufacture on the right. 017 means it's year 2017. And um, it shows very clearly there is a 16mm f1.4. Filter size is 67mm and it's a contemporary lens. Opening the top of the box, we actually greeted with a set of manuals, warranty information and so on and so forth. And then if we crack into the inside of the package, it's uh, protected by a nice egg tray sort of material to prevent the lens from getting damaged in transit. Okay, so first you will get is the lens hood itself. The lens hood is made of plastic considering the price, which I will talk about later. And then the lens itself. So the lens itself is a really good build, I would say, even though it's not completely metal like the 12mm f1.4. The Panasonic Leica 12mm, I should say. But it's not a deal breaker at all. So for some size comparisons, you can see I'm comparing it alongside my Panasonic Leica 12mm f1.4. As you can see, the Panasonic Leica, although it is heavy, is substantially smaller than the Sigma. For me, I think the Sigma looks a lot more professional, you know, with the lens hood and stuff as compared to the Panasonic Leica. I think the main driving force for the demand of the 16mm is the price. At only 1,800 ringgit, you can get a 16mm lens, which is actually a 32mm equivalent uh, in the 35mm uh, format, or should I say a full frame format. It gives you a wide aperture, which means it's a very fast lens of 1.4. Uh, moving on to the image quality, I'll show you some shots that I've taken, and you judge for yourself, but from the images, you can see there are tons of chromatic aberration and color fringing. I'm not sure why this lens has a lot of that, as compared to the Panasonic Leica 12mm but I'm pretty sure that the Panasonic Leica with an Olympus body or with a Panasonic body these chromatic aberration and color fringing are actually corrected in camera itself this uh, Sigma lens is not yet supported but hopefully they will update the camera to support this lens in the future and uh, you know do all the corrections in camera itself but for now no sign of it one thing I didn't like about the Leica 12mm is the autofocus speed most of the time when I hold up my product to the lens it doesn't actually focus I have no idea why maybe it's because it's mounted on the Olympus body but from my testing Panasonic lenses if it's not stated that it's meant for video the focusing is pretty slow as compared to this right here let me give you an example right now grab a little something my action camera right here and uh, I'll show you how fast it focuses put it right up here as you can see the focus is really smooth I should say this does focus a lot quicker than a Panasonic Leica. That is the lens I've actually been using for the past couple of videos. And I actually had to retake a lot of shots as uh, the lens didn't focus. And I realized that after I finished shooting the video and I had to reshoot specifically those certain shots which I needed. So most of the time I was using manual focus. Not to say that the lens is totally bad, but uh, it's really slow. This Sigma is actually really fast. I'm, I'm really happy that I made this purchase. And uh, actually this is a pretty good video lens. Of course you can't compare with the Olympus MSC lenses, which means it's movie and still is compatible. Uh, those lenses really focus fast as compared to these third party lenses or even, you know, Panasonic lenses. I have no idea why, but I think there must be some software configuration made specifically for their own lenses. So that's all for this video today. I'm not a professional lens reviewer, but this is just my two cents about what I think about the new lens which I got. I also have the 20mm uh, f1.7 uh, Panasonic lens, or should I say Lumix lens. Uh, that lens is not too bad, but the autofocus is pretty noisy as compared to this Sigma, which is, I should say, almost close to silent. I can't even hear the autofocus pulsing in and out at all, even when I put it close to my ear. It's only the in-body image stabilization which I could hear the sound. So that's how good this lens is for that price. And it's made in Japan. So if you want to get a lens that's made in Japan, you have to shell out extra cash for the Panasonic Leica lenses which costs a bomb. It's gonna cost you 5,000 ringgit and above. 
So that's all for this video today. Hit the thumbs up if you did like it. And uh, subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this. I really appreciate your support. And also, if you didn't know, I have Instagram account at drugtech underscore official. And also my Facebook account at drugtech unbox. Follow me there, I'll be posting all my latest updates and also what I got in the mail. Which means that I'll be posting a new video. So anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and peace out.